now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Hello? Well, this is Jay Michael, announcer on the challenge of the Yukon radio program. Could you tell me what your family had for breakfast this morning? I sure can. Our family enjoyed Quaker puffed rice with milk and fruit. And tomorrow morning, we're going to eat Quaker puffed wheat. There's a family that's a breakfast happy family. Yes, there's nothing like a breakfast you really go for. Like, for instance, delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. These ready-to-serve king-size grains are shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Tomorrow morning, why don't you enjoy this thrifty, tasty, easy-to-serve breakfast treat? Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat? The Gold Nugget Cafe was crowded with its usual clientele of merrymakers. In one corner, four men were playing cards for high stakes. Don Ritchie, the man with the largest number of chips before him, was smooth-shaven and pale. His eyes were the only live part of his mask-like face, and his hands dealt the cards with the ease of an experienced gambler. Jed Reed, the older man sitting at Ritchie's right, was a direct contrast. His face, leathery and worn, told of an outdoor life, and his hands were bony and calloused from work with a pick and shovel. An old dog lay quietly beside him, looking up now and then when his master spoke. Uh, Lucky show with you tonight, Richie. That's the third straight pot you've won. Maybe that dog of yours is bad luck for you. You should have left him home. Duke goes with me wherever I go. And he ain't bad luck either. A poker game is no place for a dog. Oh, is that so? Are you going to play poker? Pick up your hand. It's not all I'm going to pick up. You just dropped a card, Richie, right here on the floor in front of Duke's nose. Fell out of your sleeve. No wonder you've been winning. What? You mean you... You planted that there. Don't you dare accuse me of cheating. Get away from me, you mangy cur. Grab the dog. Back. Get that, you holy. You kick my dog and I'll bash your head in. You just try it. Hold it. Jed, stop it. Hang on to that dog, Bill. I've got it, Sergeant Preston. I'll break this up, you two. What's wrong? This old fool accused me of cheating, Sergeant Preston. I took a swing at him and his dog attacked me. You kick, Duke, and I'm going to beat your head in. Steady, Jed. Hold it. Look at Duke, Sergeant. His mouth is bleeding. This dirty All no right, good. Calm down. You men. Break up this game and get out of here. All right, sir. Let me look at Duke's mouth first, Sergeant. Here, boy. <laughs> Why, Richie, you yellow skunk. You kicked my dog yep, in the no mouth. No more of that. But he broke off one of his big teeth. I'll kick him all out if he comes after me again. <laughs> There's a new dentist come to town today, Jed. Maybe he can fix up a new one for Duke. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Richie. You touch this dog again and I'll kill you, do you hear? I'll kill you. Come on, Jed. I'm going your way. I'll walk home with him. It was two days later that Jed Reed sat in the waiting room of the new dentist's office with Duke at his side. Jake Davis, a prospector, waited with him and looked uneasily at the door that led to the back room as howls of pain came through it. Huh. That sign outside says painless dentist, but that sure don't sound like it. <laughs> None of them are painless. Guess we're pretty lucky to have a dentist way up here in Dawson. A real one, I mean. But well, Dr. Drake just got here a few days ago, didn't he? Yep. He come from somewhere in the States, I guess. Yes, so I heard. 
I don't know why he'd pick a cold place like this when he could make a living where it's warm and comfortable. Well, he's probably going to try some prospecting as soon as he makes enough to grub stake himself. Oh. <laughs> uh, never mind, Duke. Lie down, boy. <laughs> that howling even makes your dog nervous. You shouldn't have brought him here, Jed. He might make trouble when the dentist works on you. Well, I had to bring him. He's the patient, not me. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait till the boys hear about this. I don't see anything funny. Duke is just as important to me as any human. I'll wash your mouth out with salt water once in a while, and you'll be all right. Thanks, Doc. Who's next? Uh, we are. Uh, come on, Duke. Well, you better leave that dog out here while I take care of him. Uh, no, Doc. He's the one I want you to treat. Are you crazy? No, one of Duke's fangs got broken off. He needs it for eating and fighting. Well, I'm no dog doctor. Man, it's no harder to make a dog's tooth than a man's tooth, is it? Well, he's liable to take my hand off. Not while I'm holding him, he won't. And Duke will make friends with anybody I tell him to. He understands almost every word to say. No, sir. Get him out of here. Well, of course, I'd be willing to pay you mighty well. Almost any price you say. I got a good gold claim. And oh, I have... oh I, I see. Well, now, if you're willing to pay for it, Bring him in. Let me have a look at the tooth. Now I'll see what I can do. Well, thanks, Doc. Come along, Duke. <laughs> well, if that's not the darndest thing. Well, hello, Richie. Hello, Jay. Is the new dentist here? Yep, he's uh, busy just now. Well, maybe I'd better come back another time. If he's taking you next. Oh, I'm I... in no hurry. I'll be glad to give you my turn. It's uh, taken me a while to sort of get up my courage. Well, if you don't mind. Well, not at all. Oh, say. Do you know what that dentist is doing? What? You know old Jed Reed? Yeah. He's brought his dog here to get a gold tooth for him. <laughs> I'll bet you never heard of that back in Seattle where you come from. That old fool, he'll probably try and send me the bill. I kicked the cur in the teeth the other night. Well, so you're the one who broke his tooth. Should have bashed his head in. You bring him in tomorrow. I'll wear some heavy gloves. You bring some strong cloth. Canvas or something. Well, thanks, Doc. I'll have him here. Get back, you cur. Stop it, Duke. Get back here. You better get him back, or I'll kick the rest of his teeth in. I told you the other night, Richie. You so much as touch this dog again, and I'll kill you. Get him out of here, or I'll put a bullet in him. You do, and you'll never live to tell about it. Come on, Duke. Uh, uh Doc, I'm letting Richie here have my turn. He's in uh, kind of a hurry to see you. Oh. All right, come in. Sure. Thanks, Jay. You don't seem too glad to see me. Well, I don't know what you mean. Your whiskers aren't fooling me, Carson. I knew you back in Seattle, and you know me. You're crazy. I never saw you before. All right, if you want to keep up the act, I'll leave. But I've been getting the Seattle paper sent to me. The last one had a picture of Dr. Carson in it. Seems he's wanted for murder, and they don't know where he is. Of course, if I tell the police I think I know and show them the clipping... Why didn't you show it to them? Because I'm an old friend of yours. They'd never suspect you with that black beard hiding your face, but they could shave it off and they could check on you. All right, Richie. What's your proposition? Now you're getting sensible, Carson. I think you're going to find the dental profession quite profitable up here. I hope you're right. Like everything else, you can make your own price. If a man has a toothache, he isn't going to quibble. Go on. Well, now, Carson, I don't have to draw you a picture, do I? You want to cut in on the profits as a price for your silence. Is that it? That isn't unreasonable, is it? It's blackmail. Oh, let's just call it an exchange of favors. You seem very sure of yourself. I've planned it all very carefully. I've been planning it from the minute I recognized you. And if I were you, Carson, I wouldn't plan anything, well, let's say violent. That clipping is in very good hands in a sealed envelope with a note on the front. To be delivered to the mounted police in case of my death. Looks as if you're holding all the cards, Richie. <laughs> I knew you'd see it my way. How much do you want? Well, let's start off with a few hundred. Start off? Yes, Carson. Start off. It was about two weeks later that Sergeant Preston went to the Gold Nugget Cafe and was hailed by some men at a nearby table. Hey, that's Sergeant Preston. Sergeant, come here a minute. We want to show you something. Hello, boys. Oh, 
How are you, Jed? Fine, Sergeant. We want you to see Jed's dog. Show him, Jed. Oh. You heard about his new tooth, Sergeant? Why, yes, I did, Jed. I'd like to see it. It's a good thing you left King outside. If he saw this tooth, he might get jealous. <laughs> uh, hold still, Duke. Uh, let me show the sergeant your tooth. <laughs> There it is. Ain't it a beauty? Well, that's a good job. That new dentist must be pretty good. Uh, he is. He said, of course, his tooth wouldn't be quite as strong as the real one, but he can use it. Sharp, too. I wish I could make Don Ritchie pay for it. He broke the real one. Well, got a few errands to run before I go to bed. I'm getting up early these days to work my claim. Come on, Duke. <laughs> Later that night, Don Ritchie, alone in his cabin at the edge of town, had begun to unlace his boots and prepare for bed when there was a knock on his door. Who's that? Hello, Ritchie. Drake, what are you doing here? I came to pay you off. Do you mind if I come in? Come in? think you'd come this late. It's almost midnight. I told you I didn't want people to think we were friends. We're not, you know. It... Did you bring the money? Richie, for the last two weeks I've been finding out everything I could about you. Finding out about me? I found out you didn't have any friends in town. Nobody's really close to you. Except a trapper, Jacques Dupre. <laughs> I, whoever told you that was wrong, I, I have lots of friends. I... I don't know Jacques very well. Jacques is too innocent to know what you're really like. You've done him some favors because you thought you might need him sometime. That time has come. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. He's I... the one who had the letter to be delivered to the Mounties in case anything violent happened to you. Did, did you say had the letter? I decided it'd be more profitable if I paid him the money that I was supposed to bring here tonight. Boy, that dirty little cheat. He sold it to you. He double-crossed me. Because, no. Put that knife away. A knife is quieter, Richie. And I know how to use it. Get back. Get away. Before I do this, you might like to know that I just guessed where that letter is. But I'll get it after I finish you. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Step right this way. Listen to this. Today we present to you Levram the Mental Marvel. Yes, here he is, folks. Spell his name backwards and you get Marvel. Got it? Levram the Mental Marvel. He will now perform feats of the mind that will stagger the imagination. He will answer questions that will positively amaze you. Now for the first question. Mental Marvel, are you ready? I am ready. What name is listed on page 1,497 of the Chicago Telephone Directory? In the right-hand column, 60 names down from the top. The name you seek is the Quaker Oats Company. The mental marvel is absolutely right. Amazing. It is the Quaker Oats Company, makers of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Now let us test the Mental Marvel's amazing ability in arithmetic. Tell me, Mental Marvel, quick now, how much is 192 divided by 16, take away 10 and add 6? The answer is 8. 8 is correct. Remember that number. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are giant premium grains of wheat or rice exploded up to 8 times normal size. That's what makes wheat or rice shot from guns crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. And now for the final question. What breakfast makes a hit with many a He-Man Hollywood movie star? That's easy. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk and fruit. Right you are. And fellas and girls, you don't have to be a mental marvel to know the answer to what makes the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Just one taste and you'll say it's Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. What's more, wheat or rice shot from guns is nourishing. Good for you. That's because Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice furnish added food values of restored natural grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So take a tip. 
Ask Mom to look for those famous big red and blue Quaker packages. Tomorrow, get delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice shot from guns. Now to continue our story. Jed Reed, an old prospector, had a pet dog named Duke, who got a tooth kicked out when Jed got into a fight with Don Ritchie, a gambler. Jed took the dog to a new dentist in town and had a gold fang put in place of the lost one. The dentist was known to Ritchie, who had a newspaper clipping from a Seattle paper saying he was wanted for murder. Drake, the dentist, went to Ritchie's cabin and tricked him into telling where the clipping was. Then he killed Ritchie and left him lying in his cabin. The following morning, Sergeant Preston, with King beside him, was on the main street of Dawson when Jake Davis rushed up to him. Sergeant! Sergeant, come quick! Don Ritchie's been murdered! Don Ritchie? Where is he? He's right in his cabin. I was playing cards with him last night and didn't have enough money to pay my losses. I took the money to him this morning and, and I found him. Anyone with you? Yeah, lucky for me, I guess. Mm. My partner was along. We were going to our claim. Oh, gosh, you might have thought I'd done it if he hadn't been with me. Glad your partner was with you. How was Richie killed? Stabbed with a knife, but the knife is gone. Oh, Bill stayed with the body, and we didn't touch a thing. Good for you, Jake. Here's the cabin. Monking. <laughs> Hello, Bill. Howdy, Sergeant. Glad you got here. I don't like guarding a corpse. The cabin's a mess. Looks as if Richie had a fight with somebody. It was just like this when we came in, wasn't it, Bill? Oh, yeah. We didn't touch a thing. You're right, Richie was stabbed. He's been dead quite a while, too. Must have been killed last night. What? What's this? Wh- what? His boot. Something shiny stuck in it. Yeah. And those marks around it. Looks as if they were tooth marks. Ah, it's out. What? It's gold. Shape of a dog's fang. Yes. And these other marks are like the imprint of dog's teeth. Sergeant, you... You don't think Jed really I could have... don't want to think so. Mm. They hated each other, but I don't think Jed's a kind of man who'd kill anyone. He's threatened too often enough, but I didn't think he meant it. He's the only man who has a dog with a gold tooth, and it would break off in a leather boot like this. Will you men take care of Richie's body? Oh, sure will, sir. I'm going out to see Jed right now. I want to see if Duke still has that gold tooth in his mouth. As Sergeant Preston neared Jed Reed's cabin with King, Jed himself came out of the door. When he saw the Mountie, he stopped. Well, Sergeant Preston, what are you doing here so early? Morning, Jed. I have a few questions I want to ask you. Questions? About what? Where's your dog? Duke? Oh, I don't know. I let him out a while ago and he didn't come back. I was just going out to look for him. You sure you don't know where he is, Jed? Of course I don't know. What are you driving at, Sergeant? Don Ritchie was killed last night, Jen. Killed? How? Somebody stabbed him. Uh, Good. Good riddance, I'd say. He was nothing but a low-down, crooked gambler. No matter what he was, this is still murder. Yeah. I guess that's right. Say, you don't think I had anything to do with it, do you? No, I don't. But even so, I must have proof that you didn't. Where's your dog? I told you he disappeared about an hour ago. I was just starting out to look for him now. That's funny. He never runs off like this. What's he got to do with Don Ritchie? Come on, I'll help you find him. Are these his tracks here? Sure, he's the only dog around here. But you won't get far. Those tracks just lead to the trail, and the snow is packed hard on it. No telling which direction he took. That's where King can help us. Here, King. <laughs> these tracks. Find Duke, boy. <laughs> he seems to know what you want. Sergeant Preston and Jed followed King to the trail. There was a worried look on the Mountie's face. When the big dog reached the packed down trail, he turned left and trotted along slowly, waiting now and then for his master and Jed to catch up with him. And then as they rounded a curve, King barked up ahead and wagged his tail as the Mountie approached, as if to say, I found him for you. For there, trotting toward them on the trail, was Duke. There's Duke. Your dog sure knew what he was doing. Duke, you old scalawag, where you been? Hold him, Jed. I want to see that new gold tooth of his. Why? You just saw it last night. Is that the reason? Show it to me, Jed. Open his mouth. Sure. Come here, Duke. Uh, Let me open your mouth, boy. Easy now. Uh, Now, now, now. Here you are, Sergeant. 
What happened to it? It's gone, Jen. Well, he must have broke it on a bone or something. I, I can't understand. Is this it? Why, yes. How'd you get it, Sergeant? Did you find it somewhere? Is that why you came out here, to, to give it back? I found it all right, Jed, in the boot of Don Ritchie. And there were other marks, too, made by a dog's teeth. I'm afraid I'm going to have to put you under arrest. But, but, Sergeant, I couldn't have killed Ritchie. I haven't seen him for days. Let me look at that tooth again. Here it is. Look at it carefully. But, Jed, your hand has blood on it. Blood? Yeah, I wonder where I Did got... Did you scratch it on Duke's teeth when you opened his mouth? No, there's no scratch. Look, it comes off. Let's have a look at Duke's mouth again. Uh, Duke, come here, boy. Uh, let me see, Duke. Hold still, boy. Sergeant, his mouth is bleeding. He's got a cut on his lip, and I think his tongue is cut, too. If that had happened last night, it wouldn't be bleeding now. Somebody must have coaxed Duke away from his cabin this morning. He's such a friendly cuss. And then they must I have... think someone has tried to frame you, Jed, and it almost worked. Come on, let's go along this trail in the direction Duke came from. If King could have talked, he could have told his master of a certain scent on the trail they were following. It was the same scent that he had picked up in the cabin of the dead man that morning. As they backtracked Duke's trail, King suddenly turned off into some thickets up ahead. The Mounties saw tracks of a man in the softer snow beside the tracks of Duke. All right, Jed. Someone called Duke to the trail this morning and brought him here on a leash. These trees are thick. They brought Duke back here so no one on the trail could see him. Here's where he did it, all right. Mm -hmm. Duke put up quite a struggle. The snow's all messed up. Yeah. Look here, Sergeant. This piece of canvas. It's the same thing the dentist used to hold Duke's head and jaw when he was fixing his tooth. Dr. Drake. Yeah. But why would he want to kill Richie? Did Drake ever do any gambling? Not any that I ever knew about. He never came to the Gold Nugget, and that's where Richie did all his card playing. It may not be Drake. After all, a strong piece of cloth, the logical thing to use for something like this. But it gives us something to work with. King! Here, boy. Uh, what you doing, Sergeant? Giving King a scent to follow. He'll take me to the man who handled this canvas. You better go back to your cabin, Jed. Can I go with you? I'd like to get my hands on the pole cat that tried to frame me. Let the law take care of that. Take Duke back to your cabin. I'll see you in town later. All right, King. Get him, boy. Find this man for me, fellow. Sergeant Preston was surprised when King turned in the direction away from town as soon as they reached the hard-packed trail. But he knew the big dog was reliable and followed him at a fast pace. They had gone almost two miles when the Mountie saw a man on the trail ahead. The man was carrying a heavy pack of furs and was walking slowly with his heavy burden on his back. King, however, went straight past him. And when the man turned around, Sergeant Preston recognized Jacques Dupre, a French-Canadian trapper. Hello, Jacques. Sergeant Preston, what you do way out here so near my cabin? You don't come to see me? It looks as if the man I'm trailing might have paid you a visit. Seen anyone around here last night or this morning? Me? I have been following my trap line for two days. I have not been home. That's where I go now. I see. You may have decided to use your cabin because you weren't there. Who is this man you look for? Did you know Don Ritchie? Don Ritchie? <laughs> Maybe we, he's a good friend of mine. Maybe he come out to see me, no? Don Ritchie was murdered last night, Jacques. Ritchie? Murdered? No. Did you say he was a friend of yours? We. Oui. He do me lots of favor. He helped me get better price for my fur. First time I ever heard of Ritchie doing anyone a favor. I didn't know he had any friends. Sergeant, it's good thing you come out here. Richie give me letter to keep for him. Huh? He say, Jacques, if I die, you must give letter to Sergeant Preston. Give it to me, but why would... Jacques, where is that letter? He say this letter is very important. So I put it in good safe place in my cabin where I hide my money. Oh. Nobody can find it. It's a good thing you weren't home last night. Probably saved your life. My life? What you mean? Let's go in your cabin, Jacques. I'm glad you have no windows in it. The man I'm looking for is in there waiting for you. You better let me go in first. Quiet now. Quiet, King. Come along, boy. Oh, Sergeant Preston, I... Uh, I thought you were Jacques. Dr. Drake, what are you doing out here? Do you always wait for your host with a gun in your hand? Oh, no, no. I, I was just loading it while I waited for him. I... I uh, came to see him about buying some furs to have a parka made. Jacques, we. Oui. Do you know Dr. Drake? No. 
No, I have never seen him before. Sacre bleu, what have you done to my cabin? She's all upset. You've even spilled my tea. Why, it was like this when I came. Someone must have been here before Jacques, me. And... You said you had a letter for me. Oui, and nobody has found it. Get it for me, Jacques. I do not like for him to see my hiding Get place. Get it, I said. You can find another hiding place for your money. Wait, Sergeant. She is in loose stone and fireplace. Nobody knew about this before. Now, both of you, put up your hands. I want that letter. No! Get away! Stop it! As Drake pulled his gun, King, who had been standing silently in the shadows, leaped like a streak of lightning, his huge jaws closing on the arm that held the gun. Dog and man rolled on the floor as the gun flew harmlessly from Drake's hand. All right, King, I have his gun. Back, fella. Get up, Drake. Take that dog away. You'll kill me. He won't hurt you if you stand perfectly still. Watch him, King. Give me that letter, Jacques. Here. Here. I, I light this candle so you can see it. That dog, he moves so fast. I have never seen such thing. So your name isn't Dr. Drake. You're Dr. Carson, wanted for murder in Seattle. I'm not Carson. Richie was blackmailing you. That's why you killed him. And you planned to pin the murder on Jed Reed by making another gold tooth and putting it in Richie's boot. And to make the evidence convincing, you had to remove the gold tooth you put in the dog's mouth. You would have murdered Jacques, too, if I hadn't come with him. No, I... I arrest you in the name of the Queen. You'll never be punished for your first crime, but you'll be tried and hanged here in the Yukon for the second. (laughs) Yes, old fellow. It looks as if this case is closed. (laughs) In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Calling all fellas and girls. Calling all fellas and girls. Be on the alert. Get set for a big surprise coming your way. Say, what's it all about? It's new, it's different, it's terrific. Every fella girl will want one. What is it? Now it's red, now it's green. It's useful, it's keen. It's out of this world for secret codes and messages. Every listener can get one. And it's not on sale in stores anywhere. But look, mister, what is it? You'll find out. Yes, every listener to this program will know next Monday. You'll hear full details of an offer of a lifetime. You'll be in for a big surprise. So be listening, everyone. That's this coming Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the magic light. King and I saw the light in the most unusual home in the Yukon Territory. We were traveling through the windy darkness when the magic light flashed a strange message foretelling the climax of one of my most thrilling adventures. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.